Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'd like to introduce my colleagues. I'm Dr. Angela Fitch, Associate Director of the Massachusetts General Hospital Weight Center and Vice President of the Beastie Medicine Association. My name is Dr. Ken Fujioka. I'm the Director of the Nutrition and Metabolic Research Center at Scripps Clinic in San Diego. I'm Dr. Rekha Kumar, an Assistant Professor of Medicine and Attending Endocrinologist at Weill Cornell Medical College in New York City. So now I'll introduce you to Plenity. Plenity is a novel supra-absorbent hydrogel for weight management. Plenity is FDA cleared as an aid in weight management in adults with a BMI of 25 to 40 kilograms per meter squared when in conjunction with diet and exercise. Plenity is defined by the FDA as a class two device and is not absorbed, not metabolized, and has a mechanical mechanism of action. Plenity is made from naturally derived building blocks, including modified cellulose and citric acid, designed to mimic the 3D structure of vegetables. This figure shows how Plenity works in the gastrointestinal tract with a simple mechanical mechanism of action. Three Plenity capsules are administered with water 20 to 30 minutes prior to lunch or dinner. Particles are released from the capsules and expand in the stomach by absorbing water. The particles mix homogeneously with food to increase volume and elasticity of stomach contents, induce fullness, and reduce food intake. The particles maintain their structure and mechanical properties through the small intestine, and then they are degraded in the large intestine where the water from the particles is released and reabsorbed by the body and the remnants are eliminated by the body. During this section, we're gonna cover the pivotal trial, what they call the GLOW study. And it looks at obviously safety and efficacy of plenity in overweight and obese patients. What you see is that you had 223 patients randomized to active plenity. The placebo group, 213 patients were randomized obviously to placebo. And this is you know, your standard multi-center, six-month randomized double-blind study. And it was conducted in both the US and European nations. So patients received plenity two times a day or placebo two times a day for six months. And what the endpoints were, they had two. One is whether individuals lost 3% or more of their body weight than the placebo group. The second endpoint was at least 35% of the patients achieving a weight loss of 5% or more. And when we do these studies, these are hard studies to do because you're having patients drink 500 cc's of water 30 minutes before a meal. So it's, it's like you have this active placebo group. And so the placebo group did well. They lost about 4.4%. That's that orange line coming down. But separating out right away within a matter of 30 days, you're going to see that the plenity group loses 6.4% of their weight, and they're still losing weight at the end of the study. When you look at how much weight they lost, what was clinically significant, if the patients responded by losing 5% or more of their weight, they went on to lose an average of 22 pounds. And if you look at who lost 10% or more, that's 27% of the patients. And if you're looking at, okay, well then who gets 5% or more, that's just under 60% or about 59% of the patients get 5% or more weight loss. And if you look at 7.5, that's about 40%. And again, that you know group that loses 10% or more, 27%. Now, if we separate out the adverse events into their different categories, and in particular, gastrointestinal disorders, it is numerically higher in the plenity group. It was 37.7% in the plenity group versus 27.5% in the placebo group. So that is um, clearly more than the other group and statistically more p-value of 0.02. The most of the GI related adverse events that were possibly or probably related to plenity were mild. So again, you're looking at mild side effects, 
but let's see when they get these. And, you know, and this is the kind of stuff you need to tell patients. They're going to get an adverse event. It's going to might be GI. It's probably going to be in the beginning. So from this graph, it's to me very obvious. And again, it, you probably can see this too, that most GI adverse events all happen within the first 14 days. But the good news is most resolve within 14 days. What kind of adverse events do you need to let your patient know about? Okay, they could get diarrhea, abdominal distension, infrequent bowel movements, or flatulence. And with this, we're going to move on to the next session to Dr. Fitch. During this section, we will get a better understanding of who the plenity patient is. Our case is a gentleman that I saw who's a 65-year-old male. He's Caucasian. He has a BMI of 35. He also has prediabetes and hypertension, and he is a university professor. He started a GLP-1 initially because of his prediabetes, and he achieved a 10% weight loss and got down to a BMI of 32, but then plateaued. He completed a 16-week dietitian-led accountability program, but still reported feeling hungry after meals despite this. He wanted a treatment that would not alter his mood or sleep or affect his ability to teach. His personal goal was to feel better, prevent diabetes from developing, and resolve his hypertension. So we considered plenity in this case because he desired further intervention and he had already maximized his nutritional and physical activity as much as he was able to at the time. And again, we discussed the important safety information, including potential GI side effects when starting plenity. To my colleagues, again, how common is it for patients to really struggle with weight loss who need another type of intervention to support their weight loss goals, like in this case? Any thoughts? Ladies first. Thank you. So again, I think that this is common that a patient may not tolerate the full dose or not be able to titrate up and may reach a plateau or have compensatory hunger from metabolic adaptation. So plenity is an interesting choice for this patient um, to really to deal with some of that in a non-pharmaceutical way. Yeah, non-systemic is always nice for everybody. And, and he probably does need help at this point because he's lost weight on his own. He's starting to adapt and trying his hypothalamus is definitely trying to fight the weight loss. So he's probably going to need a little bit of help. And this would give him that extra edge. That's what we're hoping. 